It's an absolute triumph that a Skyrim mod could reach 3 million downloads, let alone win a national award for the quality of its writing, but 2015 mod The Forgotten City did both. Six years later, this freshly remade standalone game from original developer Modern Storyteller reworks, refines, and greatly expands upon the same cleverly interconnected ensemble cast and morally provocative story of the original mod. Breaking away from the Elder Scrolls universe finally allows this terrific adventure to come into its own, with plenty of fresh twists, turns, and a heaping helping of self-aware dialogue that can leave your mouth ajar. Oh, sounds serious. I'm listening. All right, let me see. Stop Fabia going in, but send the new arrival to the empty shrine. Understood. The Forgotten City begins with a mysterious stranger sending you into some nearby ruins in search of a stranger named Al. No longer set in Skyrim's Dwemer ruins, this Forgotten City is instead a gorgeous ancient Roman stronghold, complete with historically accurate architecture to explore. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. This is the fabled golden rule that serves as the story's focal point, and it dictates that you and the city's 23 or so residents can't steal from or attack another human, lest the city's guardian statues spring to life and methodically turn each citizen into solid gold. This will occasionally have to happen, but the Forgotten City makes genius use of a time loop mechanic to reset the day and keep your investigation going. You don't need constant combat to make unraveling the city's many delicate and often morally gray layers delightfully fascinating either. The least savory denizens even skirt the golden rule through loopholes, making the Forgotten City positively dripping with moral quandaries, like being forced to break the rule or preventing others from doing so, despite the fact that it might help an innocent person. I live here now because I got in trouble and they... they said they had to lock me up. But the absolute best part of the Forgotten City is its characters. Each character has their own motives, problems, and opinions to discover, with standouts like the conniving Aurelia being particularly fun to talk to. The moment I laid eyes on you, I was intrigued. Conversations are tightly written and engaging without the need to roll skill checks on your dialogue choices too, and your decisions carry enough weight without them. And while you can beat the Forgotten City early if you don't want to do everything, you're missing out on its most interesting bits by doing so. The Forgotten City is practically begging you to tease these layers apart until you reach the final true ending, which takes about 10 hours at a reasonable pace, and all that intrigue is paid off quite well. The only misstep is in its facial animations, which range from dubious to outright hilarious. A fix might arrive for launch, but it wasn't worked out in time for this review, leaving stiff performances from otherwise exquisitely well-written and decently voiced NPCs. Everyone was running toward the river, and I, listening to my inner contrarian, ran the other way. There is some combat here and there, but it's minuscule and quite simple overall. Granted, The Forgotten City isn't really about action sequences, combat, or platforming. It has all that, but it's only sprinkled in at appropriate times to improve the pace, and it never outstays its welcome. Most of the time, you'll be sussing out information through dialogue, exploration, and some pretty basic but enjoyable platforming. That last part usually involves shooting arrows from Apollo's bow, which lets you turn organic material like ivy or algae into gold, providing a solid platform for climbing or launching yourself to the next point of interest. No matter what you're doing, it's easy to get swept away by the Forgotten City's incredibly detailed visuals, an obvious step up from its origins as a Skyrim mod. The whole layout of the world is designed to draw you in and keep you captivated from start to finish. The city itself is built on a mixture of Roman, Greek, Egyptian, and Sumerian architecture, and you do meet people from each of these respective cultures as well. Some of the most interesting parts of this world are the many different items that are decorative by nature but can still be picked up and examined too. Each one is labeled with interesting or educational tooltips, lore, and in-jokes that make every inch of the Forgotten City feel lived in and real. Beyond the visuals, transitioning to a standalone game has also allowed for the arrival of some welcome quality of life features. It's got less bugs for one, but it also has a much cleaner font and text style than Skyrim, as well as a wildly useful feature that lets you tap a key to automatically follow an NPC if they're guiding you to a set location. Mimicking a trend among modern AAA games, there's even an in-game photo mode that allows you to capture the sheer beauty of this remote city. Left inscriptions warning, the many shall suffer for the sins of the one. From what we can gather, breaking the law here will anger the gods. The Forgotten City is an incredibly unique and self-aware adventure game that does a fabulous job of exploring complex ideas stemming from a basic question, what is objectively good? If you're expecting a full-blown action RPG that spans dozens of hours, this 10-hour jaunt may only whet your appetite, but it still sports an impressive ensemble cast of likable but flawed characters who each have something interesting to say. 
And without spoiling anything, there are moments where the writing is so good it's practically leaping out of your screen, standing up there with some of the best moments in any RPG. For more adventures, check out our reviews of Last Stop or Chicory, A Colorful Tale, and for everything else, keep it right here on IGN.